Let's bring in Brian Claypool, former defense attorney. Brian, what do you think of the action today that President Trump, former President Trump uh, is, says he's expected to be indicted over the election interference on January 6th? Your, your analysis here? Yeah, hey, Liz, great to be with you. I think this is going to backfire for Democrats. I think it's a colossal mistake for Smith to do another indictment of President Trump. I think at election time, people are going to see two tiers or two avenues of justice. One is complete favoritism, the DOJ arguably jumping in bed with Hunter Biden and President Biden, not doing adequate investigations, not checking the laptop when an expert came in and said it hadn't been tampered with, not executing a search warrant on Biden's home, not considering that WhatsApp text that Hunter Biden sent to a CEFC, that Chinese company, corrupt company, telling that, that CEFC executive, hey, I got my... Uh, my father sitting next to me, unless you do what you're supposed to, there's going to be repercussions and $5 million gets sent in, in five days later. None of that's being investigated. People are going to look at that and then they're going to look at the other track, which is let's pick on President Trump. Let's, let's find four indictments and try to get one to stick. And that's not how the justice system works, Liz. Prosecutors are supposed to be advancing cases that they believe they can prove beyond a reasonable doubt in a courtroom. And I don't think any of the, if this, there's another indictment, I think they're going to have a hard time on any of these four indictments, if there's another one, uh, of proving this case beyond a reasonable doubt. And that's a travesty of justice. Brian, sit so tight. Brian you know, will come back in. Brian, what Katie Cherkasky just said, you remember in the IRS whistleblowers hearing, the Democrats could not attack their credibility. Instead, they kept bringing up Trump. Yeah, Liz, how about this one? There's a Foreign Agents Registration Act that would require Hunter Biden to register with the DOJ because he's doing business with a foreign company and he should have been supplying information to the DOJ about what his dealings are, what financial compensation he's getting. So he's, he's arguably broken that law. And as part of this, this, this pathetic plea deal, right, that they put together, they're, part of that plea deal is they were, they were the DOJ was in bed with Biden's lawyers saying, we're not going to investigate any further. We're not going to charge you with any further crimes. There's another arguable crime right there, a violation of the Foreign Agents Registration Act. But more important than that, the DOJ is aiding and embedding a constitutional violation like the trial judge said, because I've been practicing over 25 years. You cannot put in a plea deal that federal investigators will not do their job, right? Yeah. And, that you, and will promise you, you will not be prosecuted. The, if the facts lead to a crime, it's the DOJ's job to, to indict. And this is just a, a, a complete farce what Brian, they've done with this plea deal so with Hunter Biden. What you just said, if the judge theoretically followed through on that plea deal, the judge is saying she herself would be violating the Constitution. Absolutely. In fact, she brought it up and she questioned Hunter Biden. She asked him to do what the DOJ's job was. She asked Hunter Biden, who are you working for? He had to say, Burisma. Who, who else are you working for overseas? CEFC, that Chinese company. That's not her job. This, this, we have a good federal female trial judge in that case. She's doing the DOJ's okay. job because Hunter Biden violated a federal law and now all that information should have been provided. Okay. So I, look, this is gonna backfire. Let's bring back in, uh, Brian Claypool. You just hear what I'm saying about Brian Claypool right here, that Hunter Biden was actually, it looks like they were commingling bank accounts, Joe and Hunter Biden. Hunter was paying for his father's expenses. At one point, Hunter texted his assistant in April 2018, there were so many profile changes, I've been shut out of this account. My dad has been using most lines on this Wells Fargo bank account, which I, through the gracious offerings of Eric, have paid for the last 11 years. So that is Hunter paying for Joe Biden's expenses. So how, if, given what Chris Recker was just saying, that the FBI did not do the gumshoe work to throw, as you point out, too, witnesses in front of a grand jury about what was going on with Hunter and Joe Biden and allegations of bribery, how would that fact pattern that I just mentioned fit into that case? Yeah, that's a great piece of evidence if they can prove that. That, that proves aiding and abetting. That proves that President Biden was complicit with his son Hunter. And how, and Liz, how many people across this country 
really truly believe after your comment, your com other commentators, all the evidence we're seeing and all the lack of investigation we're seeing. How many people across this country really believe that President Biden oh, doesn't have any idea what his son's doing with, with Burisma, with CEFC? And another fact you, we ought to throw in there too is did you know that a few years ago in Georgetown in Washington, D.C., Hunter Biden had his dad's name on a lease uh, for an office space and an executive from CEFC, remember that Chinese corrupt yeah. energy company. That's yeah. another, that, 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 these, are, these are facts that if you put together in a conglomeration, that can prove vicariously that President Biden, you can prove that somebody is part of a criminal scheme Got it. through circumstantial evidence like this. Got it, Brian, sit tight.